hello, hello. Want to make sure we're on, of course. Have to kind of go through a few little things to see. I'll start the comments here. In my end, it looks like it's still kind of uh, spinning, so we'll see. If you are on, please say hello. And I'll make sure everything is working right. Today is uh, day five of our lives, and tonight we are going to do a gnome, a fun little fall gnome. I think we're, it looks it looks good on this end. So I'm going to show you. I kind of sketched this out a little bit ago, and I told you I had this uh, wooden tag, and I thought I'm going to use that tonight because it's different. See. It's, uh, it's fairly tall. It's probably about, um, let's see, what the inches is. I think I have a ruler here. My drawer, it is, let's see, there's 12, probably about 16 inches here. So it's pretty good size. And uh, it's wood. And we have, it's uh, all about six, almost seven inches wide. So it's, it's a decent size. So we're going to get started painting on that, and uh, I think it'll be fun. We're still, of course, using acrylic paints, and by the way, I'm Vicki Jean with Vicki Jean Wilson Art, where I teach people how to sketch and paint items that they love to paint, and it could be on wood, it could be on glass, it could be on metal, or canvas, of course. Most of my painting is done on canvas. Last night we did, if you missed it, we did the uh, fall uh, pumpkin. And this was a palette knife painting. So that was different for a lot of people. And, um, but, you know, it's just one of those tools that we use. Just like a contractor has tools and stuff, well, and, and a chef has tools. Well, the artists have different tools they use. And sometimes you just kind of get a little tired of the, uh, just regular brushes and you want to try something different. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We are going to go back to our brushes though and we are going to do the gnome. So we're going to start here. I took chalk. You know usually uh, it kind of depends on what I'm uh, painting on but uh, hi Linda and hi Brenda. Uh, on this since it's black for the black you know, the base coat, I thought, well, chalk would be a great thing to go ahead and sketch out my gnome. Now, uh, usually on canvas, I'll do like a pencil, or I might do watercolor pencil to sketch out, but tonight it's chalk, white chalk, and that way you can just, if you've uh, not covered the lines, you can just kind of dampen that when it's all uh, done and all dried and get that off of there. So, uh, so if you see some little white flecks here and there, that's just the chalk. That's just chalk, and I'll wash that off later. So, uh, let's see, Linda. Can't believe I live in... Oh, gosh, yes. Oh, you still... Oh, no. Well, Linda, I'm so sorry. So sorry. I hope you're okay, though. It, you know, I hope you're okay. I can't imagine, you know, I, I'm just in southern Indiana. We don't have hurricanes, but we have remnants of it. You know, we have the rains and stuff, but uh, so I'm glad you're safe, though, you know, and I'm glad you're joining in, and hopefully it'll just be fun watching and uh, just kind of relaxing. Grab, yeah, I've got my coffee. I've been tired today, girls. I've been tired. I don't know why. It's just one of them days to just kind of get tired, so I'm going to enjoy painting with you tonight. And hi, Sharon. And uh, so I'm going to move the, I'm going to take me a sip here. Uh, and I've got coffee. Actually, it's half and half. You know, it's okay. It's better than no half at all, right? It's better than nothing. So I'm going to do the overhead. I'm going to change it. I'm glad you guys are on. And I'm going to do the overhead camera so you can see what I'm going to be painting. And you will see step by step what I'm doing. I'm trying to not to get it to uh, jump. And hopefully it doesn't jump anymore. So let me grab my brushes. I am grabbing, I'm not sure exactly which ones I'm going to be using. I know for sure which one though. I'm going to grab my new brushes. I'm still trying these out. I've got my half inch flat brush 
and I've got a number five round brush and I have a liner brush here. It's a zero liner. And like I had been mentioning, this is a new, new brushes that I am just trying out. They're from Deco Art. And I'm trying these out. I have not used these before. Brushes can be expensive, guys. You know, they really can. And uh, I'm trying these. They had them on sale. And I thought, well, let's, this would be a good time to try, right? So, let's start out. Now, when I'm thinking fall, of course, this is a little uh, a funny little guy in a gnome. And I wanted it black. Wouldn't have to necessarily have the, the background black. I want it black because I wanted those colors to pop. So uh, before we came on, I just went ahead and, of course, base coated the black. It's got two coats on it. And then I'm going to start, I uh, think, with his hat. And even if there's some chalk right through here, it's not going to hurt anything. That's one of that paint's going to take good care of it. So here are my colors. They're basically the same colors that we have been using this week, a lot of the same colors. And I have my, my bright orange. I have my yellow ochre. I have my linen here. This yellow is a deco art, and it is called Canary Yellow. The green here is actually a folk art paint, and it is olive green. And then I have just the regular white, which is a, uh, just white. <laughs> just white, guys, just white. So I'm going to get started on his hat in, um, You know, guys, I'm just, I'm not sure which direction we're going. There are so many ways you could do this, right? You know, I thought about the buffalo plaid, which would be an adorable hat, black and white. You know, black and white, we could do that. Then I thought of just, just a regular, uh, maybe a orange hat, a gold hat, something like that. Um, I do want, you know, his beard is going to be gray and white. I kind of like that. And I, his pumpkin here is going to be orange. These up here are going to be fall colors, so probably an orange and a yellow and, and a green. And, and then I do want to do stripes on his legs. I just like the stripes. They're cute, I think. So, uh, you know, when you're starting to paint, you kind of think about these things, right? You think about the design you want to do. You think about the colors you want to do. In fact, I'm going to change something right now. I'm going to, especially since this is just chalk, I've got my little, oops, rag, and I'm just dotting that over there. And you know what would be cute right there? It's a little sunflower. I think that would be cute. We could put it on his, or you could put a sunflower on his hat here would be adorable too. Uh, like right here. We talk about kind of balancing things uh, when you're uh, sketching and when you're painting. So actually, to be truthful, right here would be a much better place to put the sunflower. And we're just kind of doing this little number here to see what it's going to look like. Oh, yeah. What do you guys think? You think he needs to go? I think he's cute there. And then over here, we could still put the little ball of fluff or whatever, you know, fluffy little thing. I think that's cute. And it it seems to balance it out a little bit better also. So let's get going here. So since we're going to have that, which is going to be yellow and brown, I think I'm going to do uh, a linen hat, actually, a lighter color. And I'm using my half-inch brush. Now I, I could just paint and go around this. Uh, what I sketched, but I'll just go ahead and use that sketch instead of painting over it. Now on this black, we know it's going to take a few coats probably. But I'm not, I'm not doing a thick amount of paint so it should dry pretty quick. Boy, the weather here. I mean, I hate it, Linda, about your weather, of course. The weather here today was absolutely, has been amazing. It's just so pretty. I got out early and I walked. It was just so beautiful. And then we uh, mowed, 
and it was so pretty. We appreciate those days. It's not, you know, 105 with the heat index, that's for sure. That is for sure. Uh, mm. So you had a lot of homes around you that's gone. Oh gosh, that's terrible. That is terrible. You know, we don't know how lucky we are sometimes. We don't think about that too much until you live through something like that. Well, I'm glad you're, you're good, Linda. I'm glad you're not hurt. Well, since we are going to I have to do a couple of coats on this guy, this hat, I'm going to jump on down here to his legs. And what I want, I'm going to use some of that canary yellow. And the same thing, it's going to take a little bit of coating to do on here. And I'm just still using my half inch brush, just kind of going straight down. There's his legs here. This side here. How many on here likes gnomes? Do you think they're, you know, it's, I think people either like them or they just, they're too silly for them and they don't like them at all. Uh, if you like a gnome, tell me in the comments, yes or no, because it's funny how people are. They either love, I mean love them, and just think they're so cute, or they just, they don't like them a bit. They just don't like them a bit. Um, Okay, we've got to wait a little bit till that uh, is dry. Instead of me sticking my finger in it, a lot of times what you do on the paints is you kind of lift it up and you let the light uh, reflect on it. And if you see some shiny part, then you know that is still damp. And I cannot really do the flower yet uh, or start on it until I get that hat just right. So right now we've got his legs, his pants, or whatever you want to call it. I am going to add some real brown to my palette here. I forgot to do that one going. I do want a tad bit of brown here. And it is a folk art paint. So did anybody put down anything about your gnomes? Let's see. Oh, Linda, she likes them. <laughs> Runner. <laughs> oh, one that lights up. Oh, how cute. Oh, <laughs> Susan has one of my blocks. Okay. Well, that works. <laughs> that works good. <laughs> yeah. They are cute. They are cute. They kind of make you smile. They're one of those things I think that makes you smile. Well, Susan, I'm glad you got one of my blocks. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try to coat over here a little bit more. Well, the carpet's dry. See, so just follow along. Follow the, the shape of his hat. It's still a little damp, so I've got to kind of tread lightly in that area. So far, I like these brushes. They're soft. They wash out well. But it's still in uh, test mode, though, I will tell you. Oh, Sharon likes garden gnomes. Yeah, you know, I don't have one, Sharon. I, I, you see them, and they're cute as can be. Okay. I think that's good right there. I'm 
also going to have to get some black here. And just a little bit, because since our background is black, and we're going to have a kind of a gray beard, don't need a whole lot of black. We get too much black, or we're not going to see any distinction besides the beard and the background. I think I'm going to start on that beard, and I'm pulling, pulling some uh, white paint off to the side, and I dipped it in the black first. Just kind of not dipping in the middle, just trying to pull off from the side so I don't contaminate all my white paint. That's what I like too when I'm mixing paints. I just try to pull off some, or this was a larger area of paint, so I kind of pulled it off to the side a bit and then cut it, cut it through to mix. I've got it mixed fairly well, and I kind of like that color. So let's just try this here. Make sure I get it right up to his hat. There's going to be his nose. Now I always do the nose last as far as when it comes to his body. His body area because you just you want it to stand out from everything else. I'm going to have to go over that pumpkin. So I'm actually just giving the base coat right now of the gray. And you can kind of make it, we're, we're going to tweak his beard here in just a little bit. Now you can do it, I'm going to show you another way to do the uh, beard, and you can kind of go out like this, so I'm kind of on the chisel edge of the brush, right at the very end, I'm just lifting up my brush and making some wispies, I'm going to call them wispies. And then kind of softening that edge up. And I kind of like that. See, so you either have this side that's kind of smooth or that. I prefer that. I'm going to turn it around because I am right-handed and it seems to be a little easier for me to do it like this. As you can see, I'm still on the chisel edge of my brush. Try to get it as close as this side, you know, uh, matching as you can. You want the black to show up through those little wispy areas too. Let me turn it around here. That's pretty, that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Ain't he cute already? He was cute. You like the beard like that? Yes, I agree with you. I, I think I do too. Get a little bit more character, right? I don't think gnomes wear any kind of gel to smooth their beards down, I don't believe. So they're kind of crazy. Okay. Now this is dry. The yellow, I'm going to go ahead and go over that yellow again. Get it a little brighter. Still using the same brush right now. And coming up into that bearded little bit. See the difference in those two? His legs are coming alive now. Okay. 
Okay. Now I'm going to jump back up here, letting that area dry. And I, I have four flags here. So I'm going to think about the colors of them. I know I want an orange. I think I want a green. I'm pulling out some of the colors that will be down here. So uh, let's see. Maybe green, orange, yellow, and possibly I don't know whether to do white or not. I don't know, guys. I'm just thinking. Help me out here. Help me make a decision. I definitely know I want an orange one. So I'm going to dip into my orange. I'm just thinking the position that I want uh, the orange. And I, I think, uh, actually, I think I want this larger one, the orange. Getting that up into the corner there, pulling it across. There we go. Easy peasy. Cindy, you like the beard too? Thank you. Okay, we got orange on that end. So, you know, on this end, I think I'm going to use the uh, yellow ochre. Well, let's see, girls. The hat is uh, mostly dry, but we're going to give it one more coat here. It's going to still need another coat. This should be it, though. Should cover well enough. Across his nose. This is the reason I don't do uh, the nose any earlier in this stage because when you do, then you and you have to come back and maybe touch up on his beard or touch up on his hat, then you mess up that nose again. So you might as well wait to let it go last after you get the beard and the nose or the uh, hat right. Forgot to get it. There we go. And we're done. On that one. Yes. Okay, we're going to go jumping back down here to this beard. Get into my paint and I'm adding a little bit more white to this this time. Just a tad of white in my mix. It's still a gray, but it's not as dark a gray as what I had previously. And I'm just going over it. Let's see if I can do this side going that way. <laughs> So did any of you get outside today? Have you been outside? Because it was a pretty day here. For change. Okay. 
Now on this beard, I'm going to leave a few places that still has that darker gray underneath. Kind of a, you know, you can see it. I'm not sure if you can see it on the, the screen, but I'm leaving some. Not a lot, but a few places here and there. And you can always go over it, over the top of that. Oh, Susan, you walk, yeah. Oh, you did your fall decorating, good. I love the fall decorating. We, we mentioned that last night, too. I just love that. And I haven't got mine done yet. Can you believe it? I did put a, you know, I had mentioned that I needed to go to Michael's and stuff and get me some uh, flowers to freshen up a wreath that I made years ago, and I need to freshen up. And I haven't been there yet to do that. Uh, but I thought, I we talked about this last night, I can't stand a naked door. So, <laughs> I did find a uh, door hanger that I painted years ago, and I stuck that on there. It's an owl, actually. But, uh, so that's going to have to do until I get my wreath. Okay. Pull that orange back over here, another coat. Makes a difference what color your background is. You know, this is course black and it does make a difference on how many coats that you need to do. You got more to do? Yeah. See how much difference that is with the second coat on that? Not a difference there. Okay, we're going to go ahead and start on that sunflower, and I'm going to move to my number five round brush. We know it's round because it's not got the flat, the bristles aren't flat at the end uh, like this one. Here's the flat brush, here's the round brushes. Of course, there's different sizes in those two. So what I'm going to do is going to turn this around this way. Get in position I like a little bit better and I am going to dip my round brush in my white and I'll work it in my brush some get it in the bristles then I'm going to dip dip in that yellow so see what I end up with a little tip of yellow on the end of that uh, brush Just doing a two-stroke type of petal. He actually can't really see the white. I'm going to lighten that up more. See how I'm going? To, I'm starting at the point, coming in, going in again. I'm just kind of turning it around the way I think it should go. over these guys with a white sun. Okay, we're going to let that dry. That's going to be adorable. It is, it is. So why that's drying, we're going to jump down here to his shoes or boots or whatever you uh, want to call them. I'm going to use, I'm going to dip my same round brush into the real brown and I didn't think it would show up too much. And it's not. You probably can't tell it much at all. But I am going to go ahead and continue doing it with the brown, I believe. And then I'm going to dip my brush in the white and highlight that top and the heel, possibly. We'll see what this looks like here. I'm not sure if I'm going to like it. It might need something different. 
I don't know. We'll see. Let it dry a bit, and then we can kind of find out whether we like it. Like I said, one thing about painting, if you don't like something, you know, you can always paint over this with acrylic paint. Yeah, I dipped a little bit, quite a bit of white in this one. Might need to be lightened up. Pull that in. Yeah, I think I like that better, don't you guys? This one just doesn't have enough. You can I see it? The colors not showing up. Okay. We'll leave it just like that for now. We'll let it dry some and then we can kind of tell if we want to do something different. Um, now, I know I want to do stripes on his leggings. I guess they're called leggings. I don't know what gnome pants are called, but we're going to call them leggings. I need to come back up here to the flag. And as you, as you can tell, uh, I'm just painting back and forth. You know, I'm just going jumping back and forth. And the reason is, on this one especially, is because uh, we have to do a couple of coats on everything. So there's no need us just sitting here looking at each other, you know, when we need to base coat twice. And you might as well jump to another area, right? Now, I'd like to chit-chat with you, but we could be here all night long. Now, did you notice on the green, I did, I just started with the dark green, and I coated that, but, you know, you couldn't see it very well. So, I went ahead and added a tip of white to it. So, I've got a lighter shade of green going on here, and I, I think it's just fine. It shows up better, and it works for me. Orange still needs, I believe, another coat. Let's try one more coat on this. It's drying pretty quick tonight, so that helps us. Sometimes humidity, things like that, will play a part in how fast it dries. And sometimes, literally, you know, you do watch paint dry. You just sit here and watch paint dry. <laughs> it drives me crazy. <laughs> I've done that before when I've got ready to go to markets and stuff, and you're you're kind of hurrying. Your at least seems like I do. I always say, "Oh, I'm going to be prepared this next year when I go to markets. I'm going to have so and so many painted up and this and that." No, it don't work for me very well. I have some things, but not what I plan. So you know, and I I don't think I'm the only one either. In fact, I know I'm not the only. Uh, it just happens. Life happens and you get started on other things and uh, you don't have as much ready when you think you do or should. So then you're hurrying, scurrying around trying to get things done for a show. And uh, in fact, I just had a show canceled that I was going to go to this fall. It just canceled. I got the information today. And I had never been to it before. And uh, I thought, well, that'd be, it's not too far, you know. And, uh, but, uh, they canceled, so. Okay, guys, let me stand and look at it just a minute. I'm happy with it. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and go over the petals some more. I'm going to dip in my white. Dip in my white here. And the yellow. And we'll try and see what this does. And it rounds I want, on these petals, I want a mixture of yellow and white. But since this background is dark, you're, I'm using actually a little bit more white to get it a base coat of it, you know, to kind of show up some. 
But the idea is to have a mixture of yellow and white in your petals. I've already got uh, some talking about the membership coming up, it's going to open in uh, so if you have any questions on that, let me know while we're on here tonight. I'm excited about it. We, we're going to be painting on not just canvas, we're going to be painting on things just like I've done this week, you know, different objects. I think it's kind of fun to do. Now his hat, I think, could use something. Uh, there's, you could, I could paint just like a little uh, rim around it. Uh, I could do stripes on it. I'm going to have stripes down here, though. So, what do you guys think? We think it'd be cute. What would you like to see me paint on that hat? You could do polka dots, you know. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the stripes down here. Maybe that'll help us decide. Uh, the stripes, I'm going to use my liner brush now. See, zero liner. I'm getting it damp. I'm washing it out a bit. This is a brand new liner, so I've got to wash out the sizing on it. Um... I want to do the stripes and orange and black, I believe. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with the orange. When you use a liner, you almost always add water to your paint. You make your paint thin, inky consistency. Let's mix your paint in there. And as you notice, I'm kind of twisting my brush. See, this part here is thin. It's very thin. And that's what I want. So I've got a nice point to that brush. I'm going to start in the middle of his leg and do a line. Start over here and do the same thing because I want them matching. Now I want spacing to be pretty close together or pretty close the same. So that's why I started in the center. And then I'm going to come up here, do another one, do another one here, mold my brush up again, and then I'm going to do another one down here. So I can see better how I need to space this. You know, now I can just do these like it is now. And then I want to add some black. So there's different ways you can do this. You, I could have even made wider uh, stripes. But I believe what I would like, I think it would be cute. I'm going to go ahead and do another one in the middle of here. Another one here. So you see how I'm, when I started in the center, that way I could kind of see which way I wanted to put the stripes. How close together, how far apart together. Do one up here. One right there. It's got a nice point to it. It's nice. Okay, so as you can see, they're fairly uh, even, fairly well distributed. Polka dots on the hat would be cute. Okay, I got a polka dot boat. So right now what I want to do is do some black stripes. And um, let's do the black stripes above the orange. See what we look like here. Same thing, I'm washing my brush out real well and pulling out some black paint 
and I'm adding some water to it to make it inky. Let's uh, see what this looks like. Going just a little bit above each orange stripe. Now, like I said, if I don't like this look, I could either change the width of the stripes, I could even repaint over it if I wanted. Do a whole different color. I think, what do you guys think about that? Polka dots and a brim on the hat. Okay, this is dry. We're going to go ahead and do the pumpkin. And I am going to reach for a number eight flat brush. I twisted my ankle today. Guys, and I am having a time with this ankle over here. So if I have a funny face all at once, that's what it is. <laughs> I don't know what. I fell in a hole for one thing. And I think that's, I didn't notice it. I mean, I noticed it when I fell in the hole or my ankle went in the hole. But I didn't notice it all day until, oh, about an hour ago. But oh my. Things we do. Okay. Just trying to get the shape of a pumpkin, trying to keep it even on his beard, centered on his beard, I should say, a little bit better. Okay. I might do it a little different here. I'm going to pull it down. Make it rounded in the center and the top. A different shape pumpkin. Okay. I'll let that dry uh, a bit. While I still have some orange in my brush, I want to touch up here some more. Instead of cleaning out my brush, I'm just going to give it another little swap. Go ahead and go over the petals again. Now this time I'm just going to use, see what happens if I use uh, more yellow on my brush and just dip the end of it in white. Because we've had some coats on here now, so I think we've got enough. It's going to show up better. Kind of bring that on around. Some of them have got a little bit more yellow, some of them have a little bit more white. Okay, I think we're good. I'm going to leave that alone right where it's at. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> so, we've got to do another flag here. Let's do yellow. But what I'm going to do, since we know that that yellow doesn't coat very well, I'm going to go ahead and paint it white and get a base coat on there.
Even the white one looks kind of cute. I look at white, guys. Okay, let's think now. We've got his hat to finish. So I have a brim on the hat and I have polka dots. Linda said polka dots. That'd be cute. And uh, Susan had a brim. So we'll just put both of them on there, guys. Why not, right? Now on the polka dots, I'm going to use a different brush here. Kind of pick it up, find it out of here. And see how it's curved? It's filbert. It's curved on the, uh, it's not exactly flat. Might look flat, but it's not. It's got a little bit of a curve. And that's good for petals, but I wanted these kind of pointed. But this would, should be uh, easier to do with polka dots, too. So um, we've got yellow here. Now, we need to think about what we want to do with the brim color and uh, the polka dots. Any suggestions, guys? Anything you want to see? What color do you think we should do the polka dots? I'm open for anything. Anybody got any idea? Think about anything would work. Um, gee, we can even do mixed polka dots. Let's see. Let's see what I'm not getting a comment on, on this end. I don't think. Let's see what this yellow ochre looks like. And polka dots are are fun. A lot of people just do them as a, use a stencil too, but you know. And another way to do polka dots, I'm using this rounded end brush, it's filbert here. It's not going to be perfect. Gnomes aren't perfect, right? They have character, so this little these polka dots are going to have some character too. I got a feeling. Yeah, that's going to be cute, I think. So there again, let's try talk about balance. Now, if we want to do a brim, where my chalk go? Here we go. I want to do a brim, let's kind of start kind of sketching that in. Like that. So I know I don't want to do the polka dots. Uh, rust color. Okay. Oh, yeah, Q-tip. That's true. Yeah, that'd be good, too. I don't think I have any in here with me. Or they're in my bathroom. We'll just make do with this, but you're, that's a good tip. That is a good tip. Use uh, a Q-tip for polka dots. Yes. And a lot of times what I do, if they're smaller, I use the end of the brush handle, too. Especially if you want a, a smaller polka dot, you know, dots, I use the brush handles. Kind of like a Q-tip. You know? So I'm trying to balance these out. Actually, this filbert works pretty good. It's not too, not too bad. I wouldn't want to have a lot of coffee, but <laughs> doing polka dots, but uh, then over here, I can act like part of it's coming off the side, right? Pop it out on the side, and that kind of balances it out, too. Same thing up here. Let's do one right here. Okay. It's cute. You want to rust? You want to rust for the um, the band here? Let me see what I got. Handy. Handy dandy. Let's try this red ochre. Let's try that. 
This is a red ochre by uh, Master's Touch. Like I said before, there's not a right or a wrong. It's art, we're creating, and we just have fun together. And just paint. Share ideas, share pictures of paintings. It's kind of a deep red. Cute though too. Could mix it too to create a different color, but might just keep it like this. Well, guys. We're going to have a nose yet, so we've got to get that going here pretty soon. Okay. Let's do a little fuzzy thing on the end here with the rust. Isn't it funny how the uh, just a few little things that you do changes it so much? So much. Get the yellow. Now we can do. I do not have. Uh, Q-tips with me, but I do have smaller brushes here too. So let's see what happens if we just dip Dip our handle in the paint here and We could either make some polka dots out or in the center of the circles I'm Trying to think. I think well, let's just do this little number here Three little dots Kind of reminds me of a winner though. Oops. It's a big dot. But you gotta experiment. It's just part of it. Like I said, there's no right or wrong. And you have to experiment with colors and things and see what you like, what you don't like. What kind of coordinates together, what doesn't. I work on that a little bit. Try something here. I'm going to add some orange with that rust, and we'll get a deep orange. And I think I'm going to like that better. What I did, guys, is, is mix some of this with my orange. And then I have more of a uh, fall, I feel like. A fall color. I like that better. So we're going to paint over this. I'm just not quite happy with it. We're going to add a layer of a lighter color on top of it. Just like if we were going to highlight something. Adds a little highlight to it. It's probably going to need a couple coats. Because that red was pretty red. Pretty dark. We'll tap on this. Lighten that up. Okay, mm -hmm. I like the orange color more, a little bit more of a, so we're going to leave that alone right now. With that same color though, we're going to shade, start shading that pumpkin. I'm going to use that same color we mixed and on the left side, left and the lower side, I'm just putting a tiny bit on the corner of my flat brush 
and we're just shading the bottom of the pumpkin, right upside the pumpkin. Oops. Softening that up a little bit. Then I'm going to dip my brush in the corner with the white. I'm going to highlight that little pumpkin. On the top especially. So kind of where the light would hit it. And I'm going to mix a little bit of orange and white together to make a lighter orange. That's going to go in the center. Maybe over here. So now I'm going to kind of just shade that pumpkin so you've got some dark and light to it. Still playing with stuff. Okay. Now we're going to jump to the center of this flower and I'm going to uh, do a, the brown, the dark brown. You're not going to notice it too much until I put a highlight on it. But we'll get the center flower done here. Then I dip my brush in a lighter color. I'm just going to soften this. So the first thing I did was put my center flower of the uh, dark brown and then I uh, dip my brush into the yellow ochre, so it's kind of got a, uh, you know, just a softer highlight and just tapping and touching a little bit of that. I'm going to use my liner again now and I'm going to dip it into the dark brown. And we're going to make a stem. Got the highlight, you know, on the pumpkin and the shading and stuff. Now we're going to bring that stem down into that pumpkin. I'm going to dip my brush in white. Bring some more highlighting on the one side of the Stand. It's starting to come alive, guys. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret, for sprinkling. I know, isn't it crazy the words we have to use? You can't put that other word. You gotta, you know, you gotta do stuff like this. <laughs> Whatever it takes, but thank you for doing that. I'm going to put a little uh, comma kind of thing on top of his shoes. I like that. Another one right there. And I'm waiting on this to dry a bit. I'm still not crazy about the hat. It's okay. I like the, I like the uh, polka dots, but I'm not crazy when I added that. It's okay, but it's just not, it's not speaking to me. Something's wrong here. So I'm going to get back into that paint that we mixed together. I'm going to add another, see it's getting more of the uh, rust color that I wanted. The other was a little bit too deep of a red. Nothing wrong with it. It just, it kind of reminded me of something reminded me of Christmas for some reason. It was a little too rusty or too red for me. Shimmer that a little bit. Let me 
softening and I'm taking my paper towel kind of just trying to soften the colors there and the excess I'm just taking it kind of running it on my paper towel so I don't constantly have to wash my brush out you know uh, you do but let's put a leaf on this pumpkin I've got my liner because we've got a small pumpkin so we don't need a great big leaf and I'm dipping on the side of the green pulling it out and then I'm dipping on the side of the white and I'm just mixing this up I could add a touch of yellow to it too might be a little too light looks more of a springy green so I'm going to darken it just a a bit more. Okay. And uh, let's do our leaf here. Boy, it's nice when you have new brushes, guys. I'm telling you. <laughs> it is, it is. We'll leave it like that. I won't sit here and mess around, mess this hat up, guys. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> Don't think it only happens to you guys. No, no, no. I get to playing and, you know, but that's the only way you learn. You play and, and then you think, oh, well, I'm not really crazy about it. It's okay. But uh, sometimes the more details you make on things, the better off, too. Now, I am going to grab an old brush. Just an old, an old brush I had. See how kind of messy the bristles are? But I'm going to uh, dip it in white and I'm going to add some like seeds. So I'm just barely dipped it. Just touch it in my white, kind of pounce off some of that. I don't want a whole lot. It's almost a dry brush. And we're going to bring it around, bring some seeds. I'm just touching on it. You see, look how cute that is. While I've got white in there, I'm going to touch on this too. A little highlight on that uh, fluffy pom pom. Okay. Now, one thing I have to do, let me get me a clean paper towel here. Some clean water and this is all dry the flag part so I'm just tapping I don't really want to rub it I probably could but I'm not going to so we've got to make the part that swings across right the little uh, string I'm going to use my liner brush here and since this is a black background I'm going to use white so remember what I said, when you use your liner brushes, you need to thin that paint out. And for acrylic paint, water is the best thing. Thin it out with. Up that green just a little bit there. You see, I added a wee 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 bit of white to that green and I highlighted it. Let's do the yellow ochre like that too. It probably won't be real noticeable. Yeah, it might be. So you're adding the highlights. See how much that changes sounds? Flags. Let's do the orange. I'm dipping my brush in the orange and just the tiny corner of it in the white, making a lighter shade just on the right side of that flag. I'm pulling that across and just 
blending it again to the center part. That's how you're going to shade these little guys. Now the yellow flag is still uh, not happy with it. I'm going to go over it one more time with the white. And the only reason is because it's got the black background so it's it's not coating as well. The color doesn't look as, as good, I don't think. So uh, I am going to go over it again. The white, actually, it's kind of cute on there. I might just leave that, to be honest with you. Um, let's get some orange again. And I want to see what this looks like. I'm going to experiment because those polka dots are driving me crazy. What do you think? I think hi, Denise. I kind of like the orange instead of that rusty for the polka dots. Really, that was kind of, it really wasn't so much rust. It's almost a deep red. That's what I didn't really think I liked about it. Nothing wrong with it, but the color choices are, are important. And sometimes you don't know until you just do it. You just do it. Like I said, it's it's fixable most of the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like the orange better. What do you guys think? You like the orange better than the rusty polka dots and the deep red okay when this dries here I believe I am going to leave that white I like that white it has a pop of color up here at the top where the other ones are more of a fallish color this is you know what they say when you add some white in a flower bed they always tell you to add white a bit of white flowers in a flower bed and you'll see other colors pop and there's the you know, same thing with here and we're going to do the white like that better margaret good me too um in fact, I might even, what do you think? Think that's rust or should we go ahead and do that orange too? That is banned. I'm not sure, guys. Got to do his nose here pretty soon. Touch up this a bit. I don't know if I even like those little things on there. I don't think so. So tonight is showing you how much you can change a painting. <laughs> and a gnome. <laughs> do it orange. I think so too. I agree with you. Good. I'm glad somebody responded. Let's do an orange. So look at him now. And then let's do an orange. So I think it's going to be maybe here too. Let's see. And if it has an undercoat of this, that's okay too. I'll do the rest. As long as we get a lighter shade. We've got to get this done before we get his nose on there. That's our time. Yeah, we're, we're okay. We're running fine. We just don't like to on weekdays to be too late because sometimes on these people have to work. And, but I understand that's one thing you can watch the uh, even with the membership it's made to where you can if you can't make lives you will see the replays and at the time that you can you know watch them life happens and we got things that we've got to do okay come through here Leave it right there. Leave it right there. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Linda. Thank you. Thank you for sprinkling, too. Okay. Yeah. I do like it. 
like it better with the uh, orange. Well, you know, we tried. You tried and you just, you know, and then when they, like I said, there is nothing wrong with it, but you just get to a point where you think, ah, oh, something is not right. And when you get to that painting point, then you need to do something, that's for sure. You need to change it up somehow. Okay. Now his nose. I, you know, there's, you could use different colors. I have some kind of a pink tone here. I'll show you. And it's actually kind of a, there's a vintage pink uh, from Deco Art. I've used that. I think we have enough colors on our palette, actually, to be honestly, to mix a nose. So let's, let's pull off some white over here. A couple of scoops of that. And then this that we mixed up, let's add a little bit of that to it. And let's see what happens. I think we're going to make more of a fleshy color with that. And I think we're right. We don't need any, we don't need any more paint. I think that'll be a cute little nose. Yeah. Let's come up. And where his nose is going to come up over the, we we'll had to paint this one once, of course, but I'm using my uh, number eight flat. Kind of get the nose shape. I want to make sure I get it down in the beard and none of the black is showing. Isn't that cute? Look at that. He's just a happy little guy. On to the pumpkin patch. And we've got to let that dry. And then we will do it again. And of course, if you wanted to, look at me, guys. I got paint all over me. Um, if you want to, you know, I could have put another pumpkin down here or, or some behind him. I mean, you can just decorate this thing till the cows come home. Um, but I, I think he's just, he's cute just like this, actually. Um, we've got to let that dry before we do any more on the nose. Uh, something that I've noticed while we're waiting on that to dry, I'm going to try another little step here. I'm using my liner, and I'm using the white, and I'm thinning it out. Thank you guys for uh, watching tonight. I appreciate it very much. If you know anybody who would benefit from the painting membership, if you think they would uh, like to be a part of a small group that likes to paint and enjoys learning new things, or even if they are a person who uh, paints but just like to do it with others, you know, enjoy the company of others too. That's always fun. Yeah. I'm adding just a pop of white and I, I like that too. Uh, it just adds like a pop of white down there. So I'm putting the white in between those other stripes. Another thin line. It would be cute also if you were making anything like this. You had a uh, variation of wide stripes and thin stripes. You know, that would be cute also. There we go. Yeah. I personally like that better. Let's work on his nose again. He's still kind of, still a little wet. Uh, the rest of this will, uh, like when you use the chalk, you know, all you have to do is kind of tap. Once it gets dry, I don't want to go into it much, but I just want to show you the feet. And uh, just tap it around and you'll uh, get rid of all that, all that chalk. So, 
Oops. There we go. Let's go here. Get rid of some of that around his hat. You want to be careful. Don't want to mess it up. And so being patient would help, right? <laughs> being patient would help. But I wanted to show you how to remove that. Um, so this week we have done, gosh, we've done the, uh, the blue pumpkin. We've done the metal bucket. Uh, we have done the barn. We did the pumpkin last night, and uh, tonight is the fall gnome. So uh, we've done all kinds of things, guys. A variety of things. So yes, yeah, see, every time I'm going to layer here, it's going to brighten it up some. So that's that's good. And I do like the orange better. I do. And it's not bad with that undercoating of that rust, you know, rusty color. But like I said, it really wasn't, it was more uh, red, deep red than rust. So here we go. Let's coat his nose again one more time with our mixed paint. Now what I'm going to do here, I'm trying to hurry it so it's kind of pulling up a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit more paint to my brush. Using my half inch brush. Kind of went over. So when you go over or can get out of line, clean your brush real good. And then while it's damp, just pull it up a little bit. You'll just be able to pick up that little area if it's not very, if it's not very big. Now, uh, one thing I want to show you one more thing, I believe, and to shade this nose, what I do on my gnomes, I take a, uh, the half inch or the quarter inch brush here, and uh, it depends how big, you know, how big you're going with your nose. And I dip, I'll show you here, I dip one of the corners in a darker brown. And I work it back and forth in my brush. The bottom part of the nose, about halfway up on his nose, on either side, I bring a full of brown color down. I see this is kind of still damp, but do you see how that makes that nose just pop? Now what you need to do though is wait for that to dry before, but I'm showing you because we've been on here a little bit and I want to show you and get, get him done. You know people are tired too. The top part I'm adding a little bit of white to the mix of colors. So he has a highlight and he has a shadow part on that nose. And uh, that's basically all it is on his little nose. So I hope you guys have liked this tonight. Let me pick that up a little bit, add some more color. And I just need to quit playing with it and let it dry, right? That's what happens when you don't let it dry. It'll pull up and pull up. So uh, we're going to let, we're going to stop right now. And I might touch him up a little bit after a while when he's dry. But I do like the addition of the sunflower. And uh, that you guys had uh, talked about the uh, colors. You helped me kind of decide on that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And um, I think it's been a fun evening too. Uh, thank you for joining me. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Susan. I'm glad you like him. 
And uh, just remember, if you have any questions about the membership or anything, let me know. You can uh, message me, and uh, you can email me also. So, uh, but thank you for joining in, and I'm glad you enjoyed him. We've got to put a name to him. We've got to think of a name. So if you guys can think of a cute name, type it in the contents, and or the comment part, and uh, we might name him. Who knows what he's going to be. But uh, anyway, thanks for joining, and uh, tomorrow night we're going to be painting again the same time, okay? So uh, you will see on my page tomorrow what we're going to uh, what we're going to paint, and I'm not going to tell you yet, uh, and you'll be able to find out what it is tomorrow night. So anyway, have a good night, the rest of the night. Thank you, Sharon, and all of you that showed up, and uh, much love to you guys. Bye-bye.